The term psychoanalysis and the name Sigmund Freud are recognized throughout the modern world, whereas other prominent people in the history of psychology, such as Fechner, Wundt, and Techner, are little known outside of psychology. Freud has maintained a high level of visibility among the general public. He appeared on the cover of Time magazine three times, the last appearance occurring some 60 years after his death. On the 150th anniversary of his birth in 2006, his picture was on the cover of Newsweek. Without a doubt, Sigmund Freud was one of a handful of individuals pivotal in the history of civilization who changed the way people think about themselves. Chronologically, psychoanalysis overlaps psychology's other schools of thought. Consider the situation in 1895, the year Freud published his first book, making the formal beginning of his new movement. Yet, by the time of Freud's death in 1939, the entire psychological world had changed radically. From its beginnings, psychoanalysis was distinct from mainstream psychological thought in its goals, subject matter, and methods. Its subject matter is psychopathology or abnormal behavior, relatively neglected by other schools of thought. Its primary method is clinical observation rather than controlled laboratory experimentation. In addition, psychoanalysis deals with the unconscious, a topic virtually ignored by other systems of thought. Why has psychoanalysis survived so long with all those strikes against it? To some extent, all theories of behavior are open to criticism on the grounds of scientific acceptability. Psychologists in research of theory must sometimes select it on its basis of criteria other than formal scientific precision. Those who choose to accept psychoanalysis do not do so in absence of any supporting evidence. Psychoanalysis does offer evidence, although not the kind usually accepted by science. Acceptance of psychoanalysis is based instead on an intuitive appearance of plausibility. Freud, who had little confidence in traditional experimental methods, argued that his work was scientific and that he had ample proof to support his conclusions. He also believed that the only people who were qualified to judge the scientific merit of his ideas were psychoanalysis like himself. Freud wrote that his system was based on an incalculable number of observations and experiences and only someone who was repeated those observations on himself and on others is in a position to arrive at a judgment of his own. Regardless of the scientific credibility of Freud's work, there is no denying the tremendous impact it had on American academic psychology. Interest in Freud's ideas remains high. However, the popularity of psychoanalysis as therapy has declined when measured by the number of clients and by the number of people training to become analysts even though some research supports the connection that psychodynamic psychotherapy derived from Freudian ideas can be successful. Extensive long-term Freudian therapy has been superseded by briefer and less expensive psychotherapies, such as behavioral and cognitive therapies. Some therapists have found virtual analysis conducted over the internet to be a useful approach, as well as the 
therapy sessions itself. Freud's influence on American popular culture and consciousness has been enormous and was evident immediately after his 1909 visit to Clark University.